What if you could inspect a machine learning model with minimal code required? What if you could even see if your model is being fair or not? We'll cover all that and more on today's episode of AI Adventures. Welcome to AI Adventures, where we explore the art, science, and tools of machine learning. My name is Yufeng Guo, and on this episode, we're going to look at the What If tool, an open source project from the People and AI Research Team at Google. It's designed to help you probe your models to better understand its behavior. Now, a few episodes ago, we looked at Lucid, which was great for understanding convolutional networks. It's only fitting that we now look at the What If tool, which specializes in structured data and text. Let's take a look at what it looks like. The WIT-IF tool, or WIT, can be used inside a Jupyter or Colab notebook or embedded into a, the TensorBoard web application. Today, we'll just look at one example data set, our old friend, the US Census data set. It's a nicely sized data set for this type of exploration, and it has many of the flaws of a real world data set. So we can have some pretty interesting findings. In this example, two models were trained on the Census data set, a linear classifier, and a deep classifier. So they'll be compared to each other as we use the tool. Within the tool, they are referred to as model one and model two. The first view of the what if tool has facets dive embedded in it. You can use it to slice and dice your data along the x and y axes, as well as see how your data points are distributed. Longtime viewers will recall an early episode of AI Adventures about the facets tool. If you're wondering whatever happened to that, well, here's your answer. The Facets tool has been integrated into the What If tool and updated with more features. Facets Dive is incredibly flexible and can create multiple interesting visualizations through its ability to bucket, scatter, and color data points. You can click on values in the chart and edit them to see what the prediction would be for your newly edited value. Try doing this near the decision boundary to get a better understanding of what features have a greater effect on the outcome of your predictions. Here, we change the age and hours per week of a data point to see if that changes the outcome of the prediction and by how much. Notice that the predictions for both the linear model and the deep model are shown here. This view also features an ability to show the nearest counterfactuals. The nearest counterfactual is the most similar data point that got a different classification. Once you turn on the toggle, each time you click a data point, its counterfactual also gets highlighted. Here we see an example where these two data points are very similar, but the occupations are different. Now let's move over to the next tab. Yeah, this tool has got two more tabs of information. The next one is called Performance and Fairness, which allows us to look at overall model performance and ask questions about model performance across data slices. Be sure to set that ground truth feature in the upper left, which is the label that we'll be predicting on in order to get the most out of this panel. We can try moving the prediction threshold around for each of the models to see how it impacts that confusion matrix. We can also choose to slice by up to two fields and then select various fairness optimization strategies to see how that affects the threshold values in each model. Now, the third tab is not to be left out. Here we see facets overview embedded into the What If tool. You can use this to look at the distribution of your data points across all the different features, as well as some key information about each feature. This is a great way to spot imbalanced data as well. There's a lot of features, a lot of use cases for the What If tool. So we're not going to be able to cover them all today. But if you're interested in learning more about it, let me know in the comments below or on Twitter, and I'll try to make another episode to dive into the other features of this tool in more detail. And if you can't wait for that to happen, go ahead and join the What If Tool community on our Google group. There you'll find announcements of new features and all sorts of lively discussions. I've included a clickable link below in the description. Thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. And if you enjoyed it, click that like button and be sure to subscribe to get all the latest episodes right when they come out. For now, check out the What If tool and learn about how your model is operating. <laughs>